today I want to start by again reminding us that we all came into this world for a reason. We all came into this world for a reason. The question is, do we know what our purpose for coming into this world is? Do we even have a purpose? Is the purpose to be the one that buys the next new car, the next shining object in town? Is the purpose to be the richest businessman in your community? Is the purpose to be the one that has the biggest house in your community? Is that the purpose for which you have been brought into this world? Today we are going to talk about purpose and the title of our message is I, for this purpose, I was born. Again, for this purpose, I was born. For this purpose, I was born. Let us start with, this, with the scripture, John 18, 37. John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king? Then Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come and into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. King James Version says, For this purpose I was born. For this purpose I have come into this world. So our Lord Jesus Christ himself knew the purpose for which he was born. That is important for you and I to understand. Our Lord Jesus did not just come into the world and come, came up with some idea. Oh, okay, people need to be saved. Maybe that will work for me. Let me go with that. No, he said for this purpose, I was born. He knew from day one. Remember when he was young, when they went on pilgrimage, they, they went to uh, Jerusalem and they were leaving and the parents were looking for him. They finally found him in the, in the temple sitting with old men and said, what were you doing? Why did you do this to us? He said, why are you worried? Don't you know I will be about my father's business? Our Lord Jesus knew for what purpose he was born. This is something that we want to talk about today. His purpose was to be a witness of the truth, says the word of God. Jesus' purpose was to be a witness of the truth. As we are talking about his purpose, I want you to begin to think of your purpose on this planet. I believe if we have a purpose, if we begin to reflect on our purpose, the way we see the world will be different. The way we deal with problems around us will be different. The way we deal with people antagonizing us will be different because we have a purpose. Jesus' purpose was to be a witness of the truth. His purpose was defined clearly. His purpose was to bring light to the darkness. His purpose was to bring life to dead souls. I want you to keep that in mind. That word souls, we are going to return to that soul a little more as we go on. In fact, let us talk about the soul right now. There's something about the soul that you and I need to pay attention to. For I believe everyone has soul. That is nothing to, 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 to argue about. But we have to ask another question. Does everything that God created have soul? In other words, do you have soul and does a cat have a soul? Does an animal, does a bird have a soul? Does a, a, a fish have a soul? I know, I know that's kind of a question. I like to ask this kind of question to make us think. Because we are Christian doesn't mean that we should stop thinking. This is one of the problems we have in the world today. We just do things because maybe somebody said we should do it without thinking clearly. God that did not give take from us the power to choose what we do. The power to think because we become Christians. So I want us to think. I want us to meditate when we look at the word of God. So the question today is, does an animal have a soul? Many people will tell you, no, they don't have soul. Animals don't have soul. And I want us to look through the scripture and find out what will happen. Why are we talking about soul today? You will find that it has a link to the purpose of God. The purpose of God 
for us here on the planet. Understanding the nature of soul will help you understand the reason why your purpose needs to be clear to you or why you haven't been able to begin your purpose today. So does animal have a soul? Let us ask that question today. So I want to take us back to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis, the Bible said that God created Genesis chapter 1, God created the fish in the sea and all the living things in the sea. And then he created the living things in the earth. In other words, the birds, the flying things in the earth. And then he said to them, he said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Next, he created the animals that work on the ground. All the animals that work on the ground. And then he created man. He created them male and female. In other words, Adam and Eve. And he said to them also, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So at this stage, I want you, this is where I want us to stop and think clearly. At this stage, did Adam and Eve have soul? Do they have, did they have soul? Our answer will be yes, they had soul because they are men. But the Bible tells us that at this stage, at this point right now, there was no difference between Adam and Eve and the animals. God created all of them from the ground, from the dust. And then he said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Now, this is where the soul thing will be important to you and I. I want us to go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. I want you to know that when God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, he added something to the statement. Here it says, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Then God blessed them, that means Adam and Eve. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the birds of the earth, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So here, God said the same thing he said to the other creations. Then he added more. He said to them, subdue the earth, subdue those things in the earth. In other words, subdue the animals, subdue the fish, subdue the birds. Have dominion over the fish, over the birds, over the animals. What am I trying to say? This extra commandment that God gave to man needed some extra ability to, to, to be able to carry them out. So man was not just like the other animals or the birds or the fish. God created man and added some additional instructions to man. Just like when we come into this world, we are, yeah, we are born just like an animal is born, a bird is born, a fish is born, but we come with additional instructions from God. It's not just to build a house. The animals build their houses. It's not to find food. The animals find food. It's not to find clothing. The animals are well clothed. Even the grass are clothed by God. So God added something special. Maybe to find food, you have to go do some business and whatever. You don't know the type of business the animals do. You don't know the type of transactions the ants do. When they carry their food from point A to point C in season, then you don't see them for the rest of the season. They have done their business. They have stored, filled their storehouse. Maybe we are the ones that don't do our business well because we keep working for 20 every day of the year. Maybe we should work for six months and then store the stuff so that we can enjoy the rest of the months. I'm just trying to say that they do the same thing that we do. But God added additional instruction. We are to dominate. We are to manage this planet for God. That requires additional ability that God is about to give to the people. Genesis 2, 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. 
And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed unto his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living soul. We read this scripture and we just move on. God breathed into man and man became a living soul. What does that really mean? Why did man become a living soul? This is to tell us that the difference between man and animal is that man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. In New King James Version, we say a, a, a living thing. The King James Version says a living soul. But man became a living soul. The living part of it is the point I'm trying to make today. You can be a soul. You can be a soul, but not a living soul. Adam and Eve were a living soul. God, Jesus, the Bible called them first man, and then Jesus is second man. A living soul. I, I, I had a message I talked about the, the meaning of man, that between Adam and Jesus Christ, there were no true men. They were mankind, kind of Adam, the fallen Adam. But the man that we're talking about is the man that, that was a living soul. God breathed into Adam and Eve and they became a living soul. A living soul. Some say hey, well, it was Adam. It doesn't matter even if it was Adam by himself. Eve was in Adam when this occurred. If they were separate, they would receive a living soul. So one does not need the other to become a living soul. That's the point I'm trying to make. Not to take away from what we are talking about today. Adam and Eve became a living soul. What does that mean? That was what was needed for the extra thing that Adam needed to do. He needed extra ability to be able to carry out the plan and purpose of God for Adam and Eve on this planet. God had to equip them specially with something called a living soul. And that living soul comes from the breath of God. It comes from the breath of God. I want us to go to the church now. So Adam and Eve became a living soul. We know what happened to them. I put it to you today that when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and God chased them out, they lost that aspect of their living soul nature. They remained a soul, but they lost the aspect. This is why no one can make it to heaven to the presence of God Nobody is able to fulfill God's purpose, fully fulfill God's purpose, until Jesus showed up thousands of years later. Men, from the time of the fall of Adam to the beginning of Jesus' life, men were like blind people just grouping all over the place, trying to find their way trying to discover who they are, trying to find what God, why God sent them into this world, trying to find why they are different from man. This is why some people will tell you that they came from the animals because they don't understand the living soul nature. I did not come from the animals. God created me as man. If you want to believe that you came from a frog, it's all good to you. But I don't believe that because the Bible tells me that God created man, man. Praise the Lord. Let us look at the church now. Adam and Eve received an assignment to dominate the earth, to manage the planet for God. They failed in it, we know. And since then, man has failed in the purpose for which God sent man to this planet because we didn't even know what the purpose was. But Jesus came. I want you to hear what he said in John 20, 21, and 22. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Did you catch that? 
As my father has sent me, so I'm sending you. I'm sending you. When he talked to Pilate, he said, for this purpose, I was born. In other words, he knew who he was. He knew who he was. Now he's saying that God sent me, his son, for this purpose. And as he has sent me, I am imparting to you the same purpose so that you will continue the work of God. But I'm not going to just send you out without the right tools. I'm going to impact you. I'm going to impact you properly. The Bible said he did what? He breathed on them. Where did we see the breathing on them before? We saw it in Genesis. When God breathed on Adam and Eve and they became a living soul. Jesus Christ just breathed on the disciples, the first disciples. And I say to you, in that instant, they became a living souls. They became a living soul. What does that mean? They received that which they are able that will enable them to do the will of God. Do you hunger for the will of God? Do you know that you are not able to do the will of God on your own? No amount of intelligence, no amount of personal ability, no amount of willpower can make you able to truly fulfill the will of God for your life. You need something from God. It's called the breath. It's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings the living soul into the human being. The Holy Spirit brings the living soul into us. When God breathes, breathes into us, he breathes the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit energizes our soul and we become living soul. Now able to do the will of God. So the Holy Spirit was not sent to us so that we can be dancing and singing and locking ourselves in some room and say we are praying from morning till night and shouting and cutting ourselves. I would say when you have received the Spirit, you will be filled with power. Power to do what? The power is not for you to go and hide, which was what they did. Genesis, I mean, John 20, they received the Holy Spirit from Jesus Christ. They didn't move. Instead, they went to the upper room and said they were praying. God had to send the Spirit. And shook the place. It was they saw like fire was coming upon them, and they all ran out to the streets and begin to do what? To do what the Lord said in John 20 they should do in the first place. So we look at the, the day of Pentecost and we say, Oh, the Holy Spirit coming upon them. We want the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The Spirit of God said to me, no, 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 no. They already had the Holy Spirit after the Lord resurrected. He breathed the Holy Spirit into them, John 20. He breathed the Holy Spirit upon them, but they didn't act on what he told them. If they were left alone, they would have locked themselves up and just stayed there and just keep praying and doing their rituals. God had to send a Spirit to come and shake the place. I believe they came out not because the Holy Spirit, they just finally figured, oh, we have the Holy Spirit and now let's go preach. No, they came out because they were afraid to stay in that place. The Bible did not say that. I'm just saying that, praise the Lord. But the Bible said that when they came out, they began to minister, they began to do signs and began to do wonders. Perhaps the churches are locked up today so that the ministers of God, the people of God, so that the church can spread the good news of Jesus Christ in the world so that the church can go out to the world and declare the purpose for which we were born. 
so that the church can go out and show the love of God to the world. Not judgment, not hate, not division, not divisiveness, but love of God. We are not called to go about and begin to judge people for whatever reason. The Lord himself said that we should remove the beam in our own eyes before we start worrying about the small speckle in the eye of somebody else. What does that mean? We all have issues that we hide. We are quick to find the problem of other people. I tell you this. The, church would rather, the Lord would rather have us find the problem amongst us, the church, than in the world. The world already has its problems. And when we find problem amongst us, it is designed to help us help one another. And when your problem is pointed out to you as a child of God, don't stand your ground. Look at what is said and what was said and see if it's true. If it's true, repent and the Lord will bless you. It's just touch not my the Lord anointed thing. It's not from the scripture. Because if you really look at it from the scripture, it was talking about the king. Do my prophet no harm. Do my prophet no harm. Not a self-serving prophet, no harm. Call out the self-serving prophet. Back to the purpose for which we were born. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is connected to that living soul. The Holy Spirit is how we receive the living soul. Jesus called himself the life giving spirit. The life giving spirit. The Holy Spirit, when the breath of God has come upon you, after you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you position yourself to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is the breath of God coming upon you and it instantaneously translates you, changes you into a living soul. This is why Jesus breathed upon the disciples as God breathed upon Adam to begin the new impartation of the living soul into the church. So if you are born again, I say to you, you are not an animal. If you are born again, I say to you, you are not like an animal. The Bible says you are peculiar. You are a royal priesthood. You are a living soul. That is so awesome. You have the capacity to know the purpose for which you were born. And you have the capacity to carry out the purpose for which you were born on this planet. It's not just to build a house. It's not just to get a nice job or to build your business or to live well. You are called to something greater than that. Your purpose may not be to stand and preach the gospel. Your purpose may be to do other things in the kingdom of God. There are so much that we are called to do in the kingdom of God. Some people are out there doing ministry that nobody ever hears of. They go to orphanages. They take care of orphans in the name of Jesus Christ. Some go to widows and they take care of widows in the name of Jesus Christ. Some go to hospitals and help people who are not able to pay their hospital bill in the name of Jesus Christ. All these people are presenting the love of Christ in the form that God has called them to do it. Some people help ministers to do the work of God. Whatever way, you have to know that that is a purpose. Your purpose is designed to fulfill the will of God on this planet. The Holy Spirit is given to us to fulfill the purpose of God. The Holy Spirit is given to us first to reveal the truth of God to us. Secondly, to carry out the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And that commandment is ultimately designed to help us get into the kingdom of God. Whether it's to preach the gospel or to help those who are preaching the gospel. Whatever thing that we do on this planet, if we don't do this, other ones, we haven't fulfilled our purpose. The living soul. You become a living soul to serve God, not to serve yourself. And again, I say you cannot fulfill God's purpose for your life unless you become a living soul. You cannot become a living soul unless you are born again. This is why Jesus came to prepare us to fulfill that purpose. But first, we must be born again. First, we must give our lives to Jesus. Jesus said, for this purpose, I have come. And I say to you today, for what purpose have you come? Ask yourself this question today. For what purpose was I birthed into this world? For what purpose do I live my life today? For what purpose has God allowed me to be on this planet? Our Lord Jesus knew his purpose. Today, as we go by our life, it is time for you and I to take a moment and as the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the one that reveals the truth to us, to tell us in his own way for what purpose we have been brought into this world. Wherever you are right now, I want you to take a moment to ask that question. Ask the Father. Say, for what purpose was I born into this world? I need to know like my Lord knew his purpose. I need to know my true purpose, oh Father. Holy Spirit, I call upon you today. Help me to understand my purpose. The Bible says that we are saved unto good works. The good works are the works that we work in the name of our Lord Jesus. The things that we do in the name of our Lord Jesus. The Bible says in the judgment, everybody will be judged according to his works. According to the things he did or she did. I'm not talking about the wickedness. Sin is sin. If you're not born again, it doesn't matter what wickedness you did. You're a sinner. You're going to hell. But if you're born again and you repent and you say, God, I repented. I did this. And this Bible says you'll be word judged according to your work. In other words, the crown of glory that we're all looking forward to. It depends on the work that you did. So I say to us today, the only thing that matters today is knowing the purpose for which we were born and working out our purpose. When it's all said and done, that is the only thing that will matter. At the end, all we need to hear is well done, good and faithful servants. Well done, good and faithful servants. That should be the desire of every one of us today. You notice everything I've been talking about today is not about man. It's not about building castles on this planet. 
It's about looking unto the Lord and doing the will of the Lord for our lives. I want to be able to say, like my Lord said, confidently, for this purpose I was born. For this purpose I was born. Only the living soul, I, I say again, can say, for this purpose I was born. The chicken couldn't say that. The cow doesn't say that. The bird in the sky doesn't say that. They don't need to because they don't have the living soul. They have soul, but not the living soul. But you, you can have living soul if you don't have it already. You can go to the author and the finisher of our faith. You can go to the life-giving spirit. You can go to the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. You can go to Jesus Christ today. I didn't say come to me. I said go to Jesus Christ today. He is near you. The word of God says in Romans chapter 10 verse 8. He said the word of God is in our mouth. It is near us. If we confess the Lord Jesus, we believe in our heart that he died and God raised him up three days later. And we confess him, Lord, that we shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall not be put to shame. That's the word of God today for you. Call upon him wherever you are. Maybe you're dealing with something in your life that you don't know what else to do. Call upon him today. He is here not to judge us. He is here to bless us. He is here to heal us. He is here to help us. Call upon him with faith today and you will see the power of God work for you. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word that you have given to us, for allowing us to hear from you today. We thank you for the heart that you have given to us to receive your word. We know your Holy Spirit is working and continues to work in our lives as we continue to meditate and think about the purpose for which you have birthed us into this world, the purpose for which you have birthed us into the kingdom of God. We look to the Holy Spirit to help us to clearly define this purpose and to clearly begin to fulfill our purpose today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now I say to you today, are you born again? If you are not born again, I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. I want you to have to be a life, a living soul today. The Bible says Jesus came for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came to bless you. He came to bless me. Give your life to Jesus today. We are all sinners saved by the grace of God. Don't be ashamed to say you're a sinner. Just tell the Lord, tell the Lord that you need salvation. You need reconciliation. You need to hear from God. You need to hear, know your purpose. You need to know that you're going to heaven. You need to know that your everlasting life is sure for you. Only Jesus can guarantee that. Say, Lord, you, I give my life to you today. I repent of my sin. Forgive me. I want to be a child of God today. The Bible says when you do that, that God will bless you with salvation. And the Holy Spirit will come and bless you with the living soul. And your life will never be the same again. I just want to thank the Lord today for making us realize that we have a purpose for which we were born. As we go forth, Father, we give all glory to you. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We give you all adoration. We commit our families into your hands, for we know that you are a true Savior. You are, we know that you are a shepherd who takes care of his own. We commit our relationships to you. Every struggling relationship right now, we yield to you and we say, Help, O oh Lord. Every husband and wife that is fighting, that is struggling. Lord, today I say, let your light come into that home. Change that thing. Let them go back to the time when they used to love one another. Oh, Lord, bring them back to the first love. Everyone sick in the body that the doctors have given up hope. Oh, Lord, I pray. You are the greatest of all physicians. 
come to this aid and heal in the mighty name of Jesus. That one who wants to give up hope, let them see the light of God and the hope of God around them today. Lord, I just thank you. And those looking for salvation, let heaven be open. And let the joy of the Lord fill their hearts today. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen.